Okay. So, um, our next presenter is Michael Purdy, Spiritual Transparency, uh, Gepser's Integral Awareness. So, Michael Purdy is the Emeritus Professor of the College of Art and Sciences at Florida State University. Uh, he is the author of uh, Debra Borisop, NYU, of, with Debra Borisop, NYU, of Listening in Everyday Life, Personal and Professional Approach. He has authored uh, articles for the International Journal of Listening, he was editor for Integrated Explorations Journal, which is Come back actually. Um, his other uh, publications include Listening and Qualitative Research and Listening and Human Communication in the 21st Century, Listening and the Non Technologized Self in Cultura de Guatemala, and Transparency and Communication, Dialogue and Financial uh, Reporting and Media Communication in Communication, Comparative Cultures and Civilizations. So, there's 40 plus papers on that. So I'm, I'm here, and uh, the mountains are here. They always keep me in perspective, or in a perspective, too. Uh, my history with Gabe's are in the ever present origin. Uh, the first seminar. Uh, that I had with Al McCunnis was in 1971-72. And I don't even remember what the title was, but I remember at that time that Al would bring in translations and, and uh, lectures from Gabster and present them and just we discuss them, but mostly he was presenting because we didn't have a clue, <laughs> you know, what was going on. It was, it was totally new. Uh, the first conference was in 7980. I didn't come, Adam Gapser was there to kick off the association. I think I was in transition from Rhode Island to uh, Chicago at that time. Still, after all that time, Gapser is murky, and you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about as we go along. As is interval presencing, consciousness, I see as a mix of modes of awareness uh, an individual can integrate. Right, uh, and there's a question there because again, it's so murky. There's so much involved here. I thought next year I might do a presentation on Murakami, the Japanese author, and uh, his his layering of, of consciousness and awareness in this Gates area. Uh, Gates' project concerns. Some of you know I wrote an article on Gates' project in one of the first journals. Gates or journals. And the area, uh, we have to consider as we go along here, the area he inhabited, the rise of the Nazis, his moving around through Europe to Spain and, and Paris, and then finally to uh, Switzerland. The archivist, we have to consider the archivist work from this earliest uh, grammatical shift to the EPO and finally to the invisible origin, the invisible, uh, which makes visible present. And Gapser's adopted method or philosophy, how he operates, cultural phenomenology and, and transcendental phenomenology at that. So um, an overview of the integral, it's an emergent surging integral, uh, dependent on, uh, on spiritual as uh, originary, primary. It complements elaborating the spiritual uh, vision and temporality. And those I have written papers on, and I didn't realize until a couple of years ago that, oh, whoops, I already did part of the triadic uh, form of Gapser's work. And what was left to be dealt with was the spiritual or spiritual. So two early Gapser papers explored that, apparition and temporality, and the triadic elements of the interval, the depth and horizons uh, of already given cosmic field. I talk about cosmic because there are many worlds, and especially in today's uh, postmodern subjectivized philosophy and world uh, living, really, lived experience. Uh, we have all these worlds, and people are, are grounded in their own identity. The cosmic joins worlds. 
And I go back to Nietzsche here that there are all these perspectives. You can see that in Gabeser too. He talks about the A perspective because the perspectives have to be grounded somewhere. How do you know this perspective, that perspective? You already have to be in a field of experience where you can uh, aware of those, those different perspectivities, right? The perspectivities don't exist independent of, of the world of cosmos, whatever. Um, so at the Seattle conference, I presented uh, Gapser's Efficient Mental and introduced consciousness as a mix of modes of awareness. And if you go through Gapser carefully, you'll see he variously describes uh, the field, the consciousness field, as a balance among modes of consciousness, as a parallelism among, among structures, a maturing equilibrium of structures, predisposed in ourselves. Um, so the play of consciousness mix, mixes, provides shifts, constructs, nurturing transparency and depth and along the horizontal edges of, of experience and of the cosmic uh, that we live in. So this is very important for me is that when you see uh, Gabster's work and, and what he's trying to describe as a field experience with regions that might be the different modes of conscience, all are there at the same time, but they're there in different mixes. So, and the efficient and deficient are always there. And as John and I have talked about, there is no deficient yet for the integral because first the efficient has to arise. And I think it's there in the mix and mostly in individuals. I don't think any state has become integral, but some communities maybe in individuals. And Gapeser really is strong on that, is that, that we have to step up as individuals uh, in our integrating of, of the, the world experience, the cosmic experience. So the integral is part of the mix of the modes of consciousness, the cosmic field of awareness. Integral presencing, I talk about presencing as an activity, it's a constant action, right? Um, it's integrating as a mix of modes, it creates transparency through the contrast. The transparencies come from the fact that there's an efficient magic and a, and a efficient mythic and so forth, all operating at the same time. And, and the, the uh, paper that just went up there, all these, these vibrations and resonances and harmonies are all mixing. And who knows, uh, that's why it's murky because it, it's such a, such a complex thing. And those contrasts, uh, opacities, the spiritual is concrete, veritional, and swayed by temporality. This is the, there is an integral polar. Uh, I don't know if I want to go into too much of this, but if you look at Al Mahuna's work and, and track it, his latest book, I uh, edited an early version and then I just wrote a review of it from Zen to Phenomenology. And it's grounded in a Gatesarian uh, concrete, you might say. And, uh, McCunnis pushes this uh, Zen thing into a polarity where uh, becoming or uh, movement or merging has to be compared against something. But these two, the, the movement, the becoming, and what we have as a field to know, the stability that, that allows us to see the emergence, he, come, he comes down to where there's a complementarity that, that merges, totally merges, so you don't know that there's polarities. So I call that in one paper an integral polarity. And uh, underneath it is the other work he's done on the dialogical, and that's the cosmic field where everything is in a mix and, and uh, regions are popping up and, and so forth. So, if you look carefully, you can see that there is this field, uh, this field underneath the, the polarity, and but it's subtle. That's all I can say at this point. So the mix of integrated integral field opens a trans transcendental uh, field of, of awareness, uh, spiritual. 
we can, I'll leave this, I don't know if anybody else is going to deal with, we certainly dealt with the Asian. Chardin is evolutionary, a pile of piling up of, of um, I call the Western, the big rush, the temporality of Western culture, is this big rush to get places. And, um, and the more we, we challenge it, the more it just gets excited. And Aurobindo, I think, is about attitude and will, all the spirit. Uh, he says we reach up and, and the spirit reaches down. And after 50 years or so of, of meditation and yoga, uh, I see that path very clearly. But this is no longer Darwin's evolution or evolve as complexity. As Dr. Uh, Judy suggested, the Higgs mass is fixed not by some deep symmetry principle but rather by the continuing dynamics of fields and forces. As the universe expands and evolves during the Big Bang, the Higgs field, of which the boson is an expression, undergoes phase transitions like water turning to ice. At some point, it gets stuck. And this gave through crystallization, right? There's this bursting to crystallization of a new awareness. Integral intensity resembles a saturating awareness. I, I explored that too, that um, this, this intensity of Gates, that Gates talks about is more like the fullness of a, of a chemical saturation or a, a color scheme, where you get this depth and, and strength of color that, that reaches a, a um, kind of a border where it bursts forth and piles up and becomes mutational. Recent research on Darwinian theory has itself mutated. It was thought that evolutionary change was straightforward, slow, and incremental. Now we know evolution is tangled. The tree of life is a thicket, and like Gabe's mutation, change often happens relatively quickly through gene swapping. Um, and this is a metaphysics of progress, right? When we think of evolution in that sense of, of time movement of coming to some kind of complexity uh, or sophisticated organization. That's a metaphysical thing. When we're, we're presencing with the in, and integrating, um, we understand that. So these bursts come when unexpected, having an impact and fading into the field. And uh, we've stirred the, the climate right now, and so we're seeing these bursts coming forth, these saturations, mutations. We could talk about other fields as well. Nietzsche, uh, for Nietzsche, the cosmic field is that which encompasses all perspectives, what I was saying earlier, in a multi-dimensional present. And uh, that's uh, Eric Kramer's work. He talks about dimensional accrual, right? There is accrual of, of awareness and so forth going along, and the same with the e EEG and so forth. Uh, Perspectives can also be modes of consciousness that play as shifts and currents, flows in the field, create contrast of transparency, clear, murky, opaque. In truth, we wear the whole and the whole wears us. It's a quantum entanglement. Um, Nietzsche said, the abyss gazes back and we are immersed in the wonder of the cosmos. Uh, mystery, but also the will for good and evil. Um, and beyond good and evil, right? Gabe's challenge is each of us to, to wear the whole, to gaze into the abyss, to become integral, and to take the plunge into spiritual transparency through the attitude of pain and growth, facing the concrete as action, and finally realizing the eight temporal and the integral mix encompassing the field of efficient and deficient modes from origin to the mental. So Gabesu was clear that spiritual is the precondition for the emergence of integral mutation. It's the primacy, it's the originality of the integral. This new spiritual inception is the new source to which the new manifestations or their possibility of manifestation. The Buddhist texts and conversations with the Zen master uh, Suzuki noted that Samadhi was mythic, but Satori and Zen were irrational, atemporal, integral. And this has been discussed before, so I won't uh, go into that, except I've got a quirk here on it. In Zen Buddhist tradition, Satori refers to the experience of Kensho, 
seeing into one's true nature. We can see how Satori works with Gabe's sense of the integral. Spiritual is about awakening, awareness, and ultimately spiritual is transparency. And the others, I said, who were here before um, did more justice to this than I did. Uh, but here's the rub. Uh, Mills claims that Dogen, 13th century, actually 12th century, is it 12th century? Um, of 13th century was was integrally aware, and how does that play out for Gabe's integral? Um, integral awareness is a mutation different from the Dogen uh, Zen emergence of the deficient mental in early modernity. Um, so this is my question then: Was Dogen integral, uh, or wasn't it? I think it's it's a reaction to the rise of the mental. You can see it as some of the quotes we had uh, last night, which show that as early as, as I don't know, two, three, four hundred AD, we had mindfulness already, awareness of the mind and the power of the mind, the movement of the mind, and an attempt to to in samadhi to go back to reclaim the that complementarity of the polarity of the mythic, right? That merging uh, of the field. Um, and, and it's an interesting phenomenon. I don't know, an interesting book on the mythic is a book called The Singer of Tales. And that is a study of non-literate, of non-literate cultures, not illiterate, but cultures that have no uh, literacy, printed literacy. And what they found there was that every, every singing of a tale was a, a creative process, was a creative presencing in the moment. And that those stories told across the world, maybe the cosmos, obviously the cosmos is a bit mythic, those stories maintain the stability and order of our awareness, right? Um, but they could be they could be um, managed and changed, and so you might leave out Odysseus and say later, "Oh, I forgot Odysseus. He was supposed to be in here." But don't worry, because this is a story about how Odysseus went on this big journey, right, across the world, and when he came back, he disguised himself. And why did he disguise himself? I always wonder about that. What, what is that about the mythic, right? And I think it was because he had gone to another culture, to other cultures, and he had changed, and he didn't know if he would be accepted in that stability of, of the mythic world that he had previously lived in. So I think the, the Dogen is a shift from the, the strength of the, of the mental, which is coming on in so many ways in these worlds, right? These cosmic uh, experiences. And the integral mutation is evolved as late modern Zen versus the mental mutation of the Dogen era. In Algus's book, uh, Zen to Phenomenology, um, what I discovered was that he's deep into Zen. He, he fought in the uh, Korean War. He was stationed in Japan. And I think he met a Zen master at that time and has been a practitioner of Zen since, uh, since the Korean War, since that, that time in Japan. And uh, so he, you get this clear sense that, that modern Zen is different because it's integral awareness that, that we're talking about. Uh, that we're experiencing, that we're sitting in, right? Uh, and not the, the awareness of, of Dogen in the 13th century. So Dogen is a reaction to mental rational versus Satori as spiritually transparent. It's mythic Samadhi versus Satori, question mark. <laughs> and I don't know um, if that's true, but it would be a metaphysical thing if the integral was always there in the same way. If you follow Gabeser, it's a mutation. And so the mutation must permeate our cosmic awareness or not.
How much time did they take? I think it went fast, but okay. Yes, yeah. Yeah. All right.